And breaking news, there is going to be a protest at the UN at the beginning of the UNGS session against Pakistan by the Free Balochistan. Now, Nawaz Sharif, remember, is expected to speak there and raise the Kashmir issue. Aditya Raj call with us uh, for more details on this. But Aditya, clearly this is something which could become extremely uncomfortable then for Nawaz Sharif in particular because it, it's not just, you know, with the kind of pressure that is being raised by Balochistan where Pakistan is getting exposed, but even Prime Minister Modi today at the, uh, you know, G20 summit actually raising this issue and talking about uh, terror and he's obviously pointing towards Pakistan. Massive embarrassment for Pakistan. Even as Nawaz Sharif, the Pakistan Prime Minister, has declared that he would be raking up the Kashmir issue yet again during his UNGA speech. And just minutes after Prime Minister Narendra Modi yet again embarrassed Pakistan on such a forum like G20, where he mentioned that there was a single country in South Asia which was, you know, spreading agents of terror. Now a group called Free Balochistan Movement based in London has declared mm -hmm. that protesting outside the UNGA in New York on 13th of September. Now, 13th of September, September is the day when the UNGA session begins and shortly after Nawaz Sharif is expected to speak there. In fact, in a you know, press release, they have mentioned that there are 5,000 people, Baloch people who are in custody of the Pakistan government in a kill and dump policy and they have abducted more than 20,000 Baloch who continue to face brutal torture in the custody of Pakistani forces. Now the free Baloch Chistan movement is being headed by uh, Haibar Mahdi, who is yet again one of the biggest uh, uh, known faces of the Baloch uh, free movement and has been, you know, tormented by the Pakistani agencies for several years. He's based in UK, but they say that they, uh, you know, welcome Prime Minister Narendra Modi's speech yet again, and they are going to up the ante. And during the UN speech, uh, uh, they have, uh, you know, said that uh, the Prime Minister and Sushma Swaraj, the external affairs minister, should also raise their atrocities in Balochistan, and they are certainly going to embarrass Pakistan yet again uh, in outside the United Nations. And you know, Aditya, then perhaps the larger import, the larger upshot of this is clearly an embarrassed Pakistan. And, and we've seen how rattled Pakistan really has been just with the mere mention of Balochistan. Absolutely. You know, uh, India has made it clear that there are atrocities happening not just in Balochistan, but in Pakistan occupied Kashmir as well. So when Pakistan speaks up the Kashmir issue, it should first check uh, its own backyards and the human rights records. There are human rights groups like the Amnesty International and the Human Rights Watch mm. who have relentlessly, uh, you know, raked up this issue and said that the Pakistan government has been a mute spectator. And in fact, uh, in many cases, it is the Pakistani army which is involved in such brutal massacre and genocide all across Balochistan. So certainly Prime Minister Narendra Modi in uh, Hangzhou in China showing Pakistan the mirror, embarrassing Pakistan on such a global forum and on the other side of the planet. The Baloch people, in fact, supporting the Indian government and saying that they will continue with the protest uh, outside the UN when Nawaz Sharif comes to speak on Kashmir. They are going to ask some very uncomfortable and tough questions to the Pakistani government in front of the global community at United Nations. And, and you know, then, Aditya, in the middle of all this, can Pakistan still try to play the victim card? Because that is essentially what we see Pakistan doing ad nauseum. You know, they parrot the same line. They actually want the world to believe that they are also the victim of terror. But the point is, when it comes to terror, when it comes to their own backyard, you know, issues like Balochistan, human rights violation there, the answer from Pakistan perhaps is only a, a mute response. It's, it's total silence. That's right, Tipi. In fact, Pakistan has been wearing blinkers towards uh, any kind of action or, you know, uh, they have been completely in denial, no acceptance mm -hmm. of how terror groups, including the Hezbollah Mujahideen and uh, uh, Lashkar Tohiba, have been very much active. In fact, UN designated terrorists like Hafiz Saeed and others like Sayyid Salahuddin have got active support of ISI and the Pakistan Army. So when Prime Minister mm -hmm. Narendra Modi did, uh, uh, you know, show them the olive branch and, in fact, uh, uh, suggested a comprehensive bilateral dialogue. India received in return the Pathan air attack, in which brave security forces have to lay down their lives. And you know, mm. after that, the provocations have it ended, be it the cross border terror, or you know, firing at the border, or even you know, indulging in some kind of private talks with yes. the radical Kashmiri separatists. So certainly, uh, you know, Pakistan has been embarrassed. And now the Baluchi groups have said that just like the United Nations intervened in Kosovo, East Timor, and mm. South Sudan, they should intervene in Balochistan for a free and secure uh, people of uh, Balochistan for the common people and the indigenous community of Baluchis. All right, appreciate